baby over there, please. I'm hearing something. Uh, that's me. I'm sorry. Okay. Could you put yourself on mute, please? I don't know how. Tell me and I will. Oh. Uh, I, I can do that. Oh, okay. okay. Th thank you, Glenn. Thank you. I will. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. okay. Um, as chair of the Historic District Commission, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are providing public access to meet by telephone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. We are utilizing Zoom for this electronic meeting. All members of the commission have the ability to communicate contemporaneously throughout during this meeting through this platform and the public has access to contemporaneously listen and if necessary, participate in this meeting through dialing the phone number or clicking on the website address provided on the posted meeting agenda. We, are, we previous, previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting, including how to access the meeting using Zoom or telephonically. Instructions have also been provided on the website of the uh, HTC at kingstonnewhampshire.org and posted at the post office. If anyone has a problem, please call 603-475-3678 in the event that the public is unable to access this meeting, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, please also state whether there's anyone in the room with you during this meeting, which is required under the right to know law. Susan Prescott, and I'm alone in the kitchen. Virginia Morris, I'm alone in the living room. Glenn, you're uh, muted. I'm muted. I was I was giving Madeline the go ahead, and I was okay. muted. So I. I always wait for Ellie, Glenn, and then me. <laughs> and Ellie left. Madeline Willett alone. Uh, Glenn Koppelman and I'm home alone in my uh, in my office here. And we know that Ellie is she's, she's home there and, and she's, alone. She's yeah. off taking a phone call. Yeah. So uh, we have Carol uh, phoning in by phone. Do you want to? Um, and we also have Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Hi. So Glenn, can you unmute Carol and she can introduce herself? <clears throat> Hi, Hi, I am Carol Briggy D'Angelo. Hi, with Carol. Jerry Caraboni. Hi. Hi. Okay. Thank you. So you're with Jerry? Yes. <laughs> oh, all right. Cool. Very. Not with him, but I'm well, in yeah. a separate place. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm, so I'm you're... Gonna... Go, go ahead, Glenn. Uh, uh, I'm going to put Carol back on mute for now. Okay. All right. Uh, Carol, are you going to want to be speaking during the, uh, during the meeting? Only if you need me to. Oh, okay, so I'm, I'm going to mute you for the time being, and, and if you need to speak. Uh, um, uh, I did see I could unmute when you muted me last time. Oh, oh okay. I could see okay, where good. I could press and unmute. So if you okay. need something, I can say it. Oh, okay. Okay. So, I'm, so right. I'm going to put you on mute, and if you need to speak, you can unmute yourself. Perfect. Sounds great. <clears throat> Ellie, we took, your, we took your attendance, so you're, okay. you're all legit okay. here. The call was from Mr. Coombs, and I, I have uh, to respond to my chairman. <laughs> yes, you do. I do. So Jerry has been very busy in the past couple of weeks. Um, I sent him uh, an email the day or a day or two after um, our last meeting on the 12th of January. Excuse me, itemizing all the changes that we discussed. Um, 
and then he got back to me and I have forwarded on the updated house plans to you all. Um, tell me if you didn't get any of these things. House plans, um, the updated site plan I forwarded to you by email and the um, lighting pavers. And then this evening, about an hour ago, I, I forwarded an email that had a lantern example in it. So everyone's gotten all of those emails. And thank you, Jerry, for, for um, getting that information to us. Now, as far as, far as I, uh, from my part, I think, um, I think that Jerry answered just about all of the questions that we had. Does anyone on the commission have anything that they wanna discuss with this project? Uh, I know Glenn had uh, mentioned the um, the dimensions. Are the dimensions on the site plan? Was yes. that they are there? Okay, good. Yes. Yep. And then I think we just wanted to verify about um, how the candy cane for the septic will be um, hidden in the well. Just for the record, that's that's the vent pipe. Right. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Sounds better as a candy cane, though. People, yeah. <laughs> people are people are going to be thinking this is something to snack on, and that's not the case. No. That's right. Like a honey wagon, you know. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> it's so New Hampshire. <laughs> it's true. So one of the things Jerry said was, uh, Jerry, correct me if I'm wrong. You said you thought you might put um, some landscaping beside that pipe. It's very close to Scotland Road, and quite obvious. Um, sometimes people don't like to put a shrub or a bush there because of roots, roots. going down the septic system. So um, those candy canes, septic vents have been an issue that in the past we've ignored and not been happy with big, ugly white pipes sticking up. So. Um, I didn't know how to share my screen, I'm sorry to say. So I'm gonna hold up a couple of suggestions, Jerry. Certainly you can put some shrubbery there if you want to. Um, I have seen people do low root shrubbery like um, a rhododendron, but um, there, if you go to decorative septic vent pipes, there are so many choices. So I'm gonna show you just a couple. So. Here I'm holding up, this company is called thedirtybird.com. <laughs> and here are the pipes. And their idea is you could have a, a globe, one of those reflective globes. And of course the shaft below it is covering the pipe or you could have a sundial, okay? Then uh, this is called Septic Systems of Maine. Theirs is a little sturdier looking, but they, now I'm not sure if those are actually lights or just look like lights, but- It might be solar lights, Virginia. They might be, okay. But they go over septic system uh, candy canes, if you will. And then on the bottom, I saw so many others, I didn't keep printing them out. There was what was called a granite post. It's not really granite. It slips down over the top of the septic system. And if it's near a driveway, they even have reflectors to reflect off it. There's a bird bath. Um, there's a bird house. There's a lamp post. You could even have a um, lighthouse, which probably isn't appropriate on Main Street in Kingston. But I did that because Jerry, there are so many different choices and that's really part of your side lawn. And um, if you wanna put a rhododendron or a lilac there, that would be fine. But there are lots of other choices um, to help cover up that vent pipe. So I think uh, obviously he could choose. And if we wanted to say that's something we don't know about, a condition would be that it would be camouflaged in some way. That would be a simple uh, condition of approval. I'm fine with that. You know, Virginia, I, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the, the one that said granite post because 
I've seen some and it, they look like the, uh, you know, the, the, the granite hitching posts that are, that are pretty common in town actually. Yes, I have one myself, which actually happens to be a real granite hitching post, but right. my daughter has one. She's in a, a fairly modern um, housing development with a big standpipe there and, and put that granite post down over it. And then around it, she put some flowers. Looks fine, looks yes. great. Yeah. I'll have to look into that. What'd you say, Ellie? I got to look into those because when I bought the Church Street property, no one made that suggestion, but I, I've got a, a shrub around it. I have, I've done that, but I like the idea of a granite post or something different. So I will look, thank you for the suggestion. Yep. Yeah, there are lots of, if you write decorative um, septic system vents, gotcha. lots of choices. Great, that's great, thank you. So Jerry, the, um, the trim on the house looks great. It does. Um, I did mention to Jerry that the that the trim we had talked about the trim on the back not being the same width. It looks like they changed it to being consistent the whole way around the house. Nice. Um, uh, I'm 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 ambivalent about whether you know the the trim is matchy all the way around the house or the back is uh, plainer. To me, it doesn't matter. Um, I, I like I like the consistency, and if and if the design is you know if if, if the applicant is willing to do that, uh, I think that's great. Especially where the backside, and I keep going back to this, has as much exposure uh, as the front because of the traveling up from Scotland Road. I really like the back view in that the the roof line is carried across, and that yes. and that strip of. Um, fake corner board is there it, it it makes all the difference doesn't it and those additional windows in the garage really make a difference as well i agree i agree it's really beautiful in the back very yeah, it beautiful totally looks like an addition now madeline i wouldn't be surprised if the design company takes that idea and runs with it because it's a good one <laughs> and the trim all the way around is um thicker what's the word I'm looking for wider uh, more detail. Wider. wider thank you wider and um and and Jerry I, you and your your designer your builder not builder your designer the art form home you paid attention to all the things we said so I see hinges on the garage doors mm -hmm. and uh handles and uh, uh nice lights I like the lighting pictures you sent I thought that looked good um Besides being sure that somehow that candy cane post is camouflaged somehow, I just think I went down that checklist and said yes, yes, yes to everything. Me I too. Didn't, I didn't see anything that I wondered, oh, what about this? No, me neither. I think that you ticked all the boxes, Jerry. Well done. As far as the uh, art form, I think they call this design a version... 22. I think they've added this version to their uh, oh. designs according to what <laughs> and, was version 16. And, this one's and, version 22. So nice. I don't know why they wouldn't keep this. It's a much better looking house, I think, than what they originally gave us. And they, should give, Kingston, they should give Kingston HDC credit for all that. Exactly. <laughs> Jerry and Jerry, because he worked Jerry. with them. Jerry. Jerry, right. Jerry, right. Should, Jerry should get a commission. <laughs> well, maybe they can give them a break on the design. Well, they're easy to work with. The side farm company, they're very uh, accommodating and they're right on the ball. I gave them the changes that within three hours I had the changes on print. Oh, wow. That's great. So they're very really good. And they, they've got a lot of houses going up in this area from, you know, their designs. I think there's one, I'm, I'm not sure, but it seems very familiar. The one that they put um, on the way into. Exeter, where that sharp corner is, where they took the barn down and they have yeah. uh, the across old stone, the old that looks, stone farm. Yeah. yeah, that looks like um, that looks like one of their designs right in there. Yeah, so. there's a lot of them when you travel. Around. I think I think some of the ones that are going into the old um, uh, Hazel Hansen farm property. I think some of them, if not all of them, are also of that company's design. Yeah, yeah, they're very good. Well, I think that with working together, Jerry, all of us with our ideas and your um, 
response, positive response, has made this a house that looks like it's it's just going to fit in really nicely, not only from the view from Main Street, but we've been working on that view from Scotland Road because it's so prominent. And I think both sides are are great. I think I think it's going to be really nice on that piece of property. Thank you. The color of the house right now, we've darkened it up from the last. I like morning. it. I like uh, it. I like that gray. Yes. Uh, and uh, it's a gray out of the catalog that I gave to uh, Art Form. I think they had the same catalog, so they kind of copied the same color. The shade might be a hair darker, but on the final product, but it'll be pretty close to what you see right there. Nice. And um, the other one was kind of washed out. I like this one better. Yeah, this is more striking, I think. Yeah. And you got the returns they put on there, which add to it. Yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, it's, uh, it's about it as far as I can see. We, we, we will camouflage that post, the uh, vent post for the uh, septic. That's not a problem. Okay. We'll lot, lot, lots of choices there. Yeah, there are. We do a good job on that. That's not a big deal. Yep. Good. I that. We moved the driveway up. This is about 100 feet from the uh, corner post on the uh, corner of Main Street and Scotland Road. Right, we start, the, no, the reg, edge of the house is about 100 feet up. So it's further away from Main Street, which uh, uh, the town agent wanted. And it shows the new driveway. Yep. To the left of that telephone pole. So it clears that. Perfect. We, we didn't have to move the septic. That stays the same. There's no new uh, uh, approvals there. So all, all we did really was put the dimensions of the house on the on the site plan. And uh, Jer Jerry, you, you didn't have to move the telephone pole. Is that right? No. Okay, no, good. we want to avoid that. It yep. gets into, you know. Jerry, will this house have a um, Main Street or a Scotland Road address? Just out of curiosity. I don't know. The fit, uh, is it where the driveway faces? Not necessarily. Not, not necessarily. That new house that went in next door to Madeline has a Main Street address um, and the entrance is from Eastway. Yep. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Who determines the address? Uh, uh, Road agent, probably. Probably. I would think. Road agent or police. Uh, I'm not sure which. Ellie, yeah. do you know? I'm not sure. The police, I believe it's police yeah. who gives the address. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, so Don Briggs would be the one to contact yeah. him. Yeah. I would push for a Main Street address only because it's. Yeah, I would. You know, too. it's nice. It's more yeah. on Main Street. So it's yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. yeah, it faces Main Street. So it makes yeah. a lot of sense if it yeah. is. I don't think there was any problem with getting the. Um, the other new construction, uh, having that be a Main Street address. So right. I don't think there'll be a problem. Well, of course, there was history with that lot that, that uh, you know, it existed long before East Way went in. And so uh, I think that was part of the justification for keeping it Main Street. But I mean, one could argue that this, you know, that when the Badger Tavern was on this lot, uh, it was it was on Main Street. So yeah, I was going to say that had history, too. It's just a lot longer, <laughs> a lot longer. <laughs> So speaking of Badger Tavern, I, I don't think, Susan, that you got any information from uh, Ralph about his opinion about this. No, um, I haven't heard from him. Yes, well, he, he's had, had back troubles, so he's kind of under the weather. But I did talk to him, and one of the things he was wishing, and so this is nothing to do with the construction, Jerry, just, just a... a a wish is that somewhere on the property there would be the Badger Tavern sign. And um, I don't think that's a requirement that HDC can oversee. Maybe, maybe not. But having that, uh, the site of Badger Tavern uh, sit there for quite a while, perhaps somewhere on that property, um, that sign could be put up. That was just a suggestion from well, I want to keep it. Mercy. I want to keep that sign. You want to keep it yourself? No, for the oh, property. You want to put it on the property? Great. It's right, you see it now wonderful. anyway. It's it would on be the property. Wonderful. That yeah. would be great. That would be great that if you could great. do yeah, that. That's definitely part of the deal. And I want to get a history on that lot. I want to put it into the uh, 
narrative when we go to sell a property. We're going to I think that's that's a good sell selling that. point. Yeah. And with, uh, Connor, selling yeah, and the granite post. I want to keep that. I think that was the corner of uh, one of the old tablets. Well, you know, the granite post is sticking up right now. Okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Great. Right there. Wonderful. Yeah. That's good. Uh, Speaking of granite, uh, we didn't discuss the pavers. The pavers look really good, better than a than an asphalt driveway. Yeah. Oh, I agree. I want to do. How about red brick? I got a lot of red brick. I might use, want to use there. Sure. Is that okay? Yep. It will look nice. Yeah. I Either think, one. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to use red brick. I got fifteen thousand I inherited when I bought my house. So. <laughs> wow. To, you know, go by eight. You could make a big walkway with that many bricks. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Nice patio out back. You know, right. <laughs> by the pool. <laughs> so I'm ready to make a, a motion that we uh, accept this um, proposal as presented um, of this date, 12821, because we've had several iterations of this. As of this date, with the one um, consideration uh, that the uh, septic vent pipe will be camouflaged. That was made by Virginia. Do we have a second? I will second. Do we have any discussion? That second was by Madeline Willette. Do we have any discussion? Uh, on the motion? You, you, you said that as of this date, Virginia, it might I, I think that's good, but it if there's a date on the plan set that we got, it might be worth referencing that as well. I don't. Oh, there is a plan. There is a date on the plan set one nineteen twenty twenty one. That's a better date. Thank you, Glenn. One nineteen twenty twenty one. Yes. Okay. And and that all of in addition to that, all of the. Um, all of the supplemental materials that have been provided to us for this meeting, uh, the pavers, the lights, the uh, all the various checklist, the checklist. Yeah, I have the check. I have the checklist printed, the newest design, and I will print out the um, the uh, description of the lights and staple those to these as well as the updated plot plan. So I have all that here. Okay. Okay. I, I only, I only have one thing further under other under other under uh, further discussion, um, and and I, I I don't mean this to be picky, and I certainly don't want to hold this up for it. But uh, at earlier in the process, I was I had asked for and suggested a uh, a street view of what the elevation of the house would look like from the street, just to get a sense for how high or how level it was going to be. And we never did see that. So that's right. I, on I the, sorry, on the on this plan, if I'm not mistaken, there was it's there is on the page one, two, three, four, six. It says um, it's on this front view here. Okay. Presumed grade. Um, are you seeing that down yeah. here? It says presumed grade right there. Right. And so, but does it give an elevation? From the, does, from the site plan, it gives all the contours. There's only a couple of feet variation. But that's the land, Jerry. That's not that's not how the house is going to sit up on the land. Well, the foundation will stick up above the ground, maybe six or eight inches. We don't want the foundation underground. Right. Right. Be, I guess my question is, how much will the soil be built up? Then maybe. Because all the all the houses along that stretch are all pretty much level to the ground. This will be the same thing. Uh, you'll see very very little foundation, but it has to stick up above the ground for building purposes. You don't want the ground the uh, oh. ground above. Oh, I I, it, I don't it, have any issue with the foundation sticking up, Jerry. I, okay. I understand that. Um, it was just a question of of whether or not the the land would be built up prior to the foundation going in. That's all. We did talk about that a couple of meetings ago. Right? Yeah, yeah he, he said that he would, you know, definitely he wouldn't be able to see that it would have been landscaped. So yeah, he's gonna he's gonna grade he's gonna grade, grade up he, grade up to it. it up so you exactly. see so see a foundation. It's gonna be exactly. graded. There'll be uh, shrubbery uh, adequate enough to uh, 
camouflage any foundation that's uh, above the ground, which won't be very much. Yeah. So you're so you're going to dig a hole and put the basement underground with some of the tops showing. You're not going to just walk in and throw a basement on top of the land that's that. existing and then move the land up. You got wire tables there. It's all engineered, so it's going to be a specific height. And, uh, you know, it's all a matter of uh, water table and what Dennis engineered as far as the height of the foundation, that's going to be all. I uh, can't read that point. plan, Glenn. Can you, can you figure out what that is on the plan? How deep that would be? Well, well, no, because, because oh. the plan doesn't show water table and the plan does show elevations, but I mean, it's, it's, it's basically the, the contour of the land. It doesn't, it's not give. I don't think it's giving information about the, uh, about the, um, you know the final the final construction okay because because what from what the plan looks today it looks like you're going to dig a huge hole put a basement in some of the foundation will show obviously because that's what a normal foundation looks like and then the house will sit pretty much level with with the land that's there now it right it's sloped it jerry said that the, that it will stick up right if you, if you built it right now with the flat lot it would stick up what Jerry a foot a foot or eighteen inches, and not so even, he's go not even. Not but even before much. you grade it is what I'm saying. Then you're going to grade up to oh, it. Oh yeah, it's going to be graded, so you're not going to yeah. look at the foundation, guaranteed. Yeah. And it's pretty much dictated by the soils, and all the notes on this site plan pretty much dictate where the septic where the uh, uh, house is going to be located in re relation to the septic system. I believe it has to be 18 inches off the ground per because it, to keep away termites, ants, all that. Yeah, it's got to be above the ground. Okay, yeah. I don't. I don't want to belabor this. The the height of the foundation is not my concern. It's 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 how much you have to build up the land before you then put the foundation in. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, if we have to, if we look at from the street and we see the foundation and then the land is pushed up to the foundation and then the house is sat on, it will look like no, a won't tower yeah, look on at the, Main Street. So that he's just know, trying to uh, determine that the basement is definitely, you're going to dig a hole for the basement. I well, the house next door, right. that's probably got a, uh, a basement and it was dug, it's the same soil. And uh, you don't see any foundation sticking up there, so this shouldn't be any different. Okay. And I imagine they have a standard height in the ceiling in the basement, which is, I don't know what the dimension is, but. Uh, uh, Probably eight feet. I don't think we have to worry mm -hmm. about the Carboni. He's done yeoman's job in making sure the house looks outstanding for being on Main Street. And for yes. that, I'm very appreciative. Yes. I don't very fussy. And up the foundation. Beautiful when it's finished. And, uh, we're not going to we're not going to make a cheapie out of this thing. It's going to be done no. very well, and uh, no corners are going to be cut. We're not going to put sub zero refrigeration in, but that's not cutting. <laughs> we're going to put a top quality stuff. Most and, of us uh, don't have sub zero either. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so but, we have we have a motion and a second. Um. Are we ready for a vote? Have we discussed this enough or do you want to talk about it some more? Say we vote. I'm ready. Okay, we'll, we'll do a roll call vote then. Um, Susan Prescott, aye. Virginia Morris, aye. Ellie Alessio, aye. Two more. Patty and, and Glenn. Aye. Madeline Willette, aye. Glenn Koppelman, abstain. Okay, so we have uh, an approval. Um, Virginia, would you like to talk to Jerry about what this all entails as far as um, the certificate of approval being sent to Jerry? So Jerry, I um, write up a certificate of approval. And if there are any conditions, and this one just has that about covering the septic vent. <clears throat> and I attach all the plans that you've sent to us that was the site plan with the septic and all the pieces of the house and 
your your lighting and your pavers and all of those pieces go to the selectman's office. Um, and then I mail one to you and I take one to the selectman's office. Then you, you can go into uh, get your building permit. And I might not do it tonight, but I usually get it done within 24 hours. So Jerry, where would you like me to mail your copy of the uh, certificate of approval? 19 Washington Way. Kingston. In Kingston here? Yeah. Okay, that's what I will do. And Susan, if you've yes. got a set of that all printed out, I was looking I at the most updated plan right here on my computer tonight. I didn't print another one out. Yeah, but if I you have print it. that all out and the pavers and the lights and everything and drop that off on my porch, yeah. I'll just send I just send Jerry a certificate of approval, but I send the building inspector, the selectman, the whole nine yards. Okay. So I will I have to go out in the morning, I'll drop it off to your porch tomorrow morning. Sure. Okay. That'd be All great. Right. Jerry, I want to thank you for working with us and for uh, being patient with us while we while we go through the process. You've been excellent to work with. So I appreciate thank you very you. much. The feeling is mutual. Thank you. And, uh, I think that'll be a nice addition to Main Street. Well, my name is on it, so it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Yeah, excellent. Thank okay, thank you very much. Appreciate All right. It. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Bye. If but we don't have very... anything, I didn't put anything else on this agenda because it's the second meeting of the month. So um, unless anyone has anything pressing, I'm willing to just, Virginia? Did everyone get a copy of the joint meeting of the Historic District Commission and the Heritage Commission? Did everyone agenda. get a copy? Oh, oh, the, of the minutes? Of the minutes, excuse me. Yes. Yeah. You should have. Yeah, I sent them out. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So if anyone, do, if anyone has nothing else, then let's, um, yes, Madeline, are you going to say something? Say, I might not be able to make the next meeting. It's that February 9th. So yep. I just want to let you know. Okay. All right. So we were talking about making that meeting into a work meeting because oh. I have no applications at this point. And it is a little bit late in the day if we're going to do the 30 days before the next meeting thing. So uh, we were going to work on the on the sign um, ordinances or the sign whatever we were working on before a year ago, right. um, and also something about these small pop up sheds. That's my pet peeve, my most recent pet peeve. Um, but if Madeline's not going to be at the meeting, then maybe we should just kick that can down the road till the March meeting. Okay, is that all right with everyone or not? And I don't know about I don't know about you all, but I am I have way too many meetings. So any any, any opportunity for one fewer meeting is fine with me. Yes, and yeah. Maddie kind of led the charge there on the um, signs. Maddie, yes. you've done a lot of work on that. We'll have to dredge that up again. Yeah. But that was a um, long time ago. So if we oh. if if we're having trouble finding that resource, and Ellie. I don't think Ellie was even on uh, in our in our club at that point. So maybe Madeline, could you um could you send out the yeah if you can? And then also um what I find what I find interesting is uh, going online and looking at other historic district guidelines. Um, the town of Salem, Mass, has a good. Uh, one yes. on I yes. need to I need to do a little more work about fence about fences um because we're having issues with fencing and with sheds um and also with signs so if you know if you if you get a free hour or something and you want to poke around in other towns um online resources and maybe gather some um some pointers that might work for Kingston that would be a good thing to do yeah. I think that's what we had done with the signs. Uh, I don't even remember the towns, but they'd already had the um, New Hampshire Preservation Alliance work with other towns. So I stole a little from them, but there was like three different towns, I think. But it, that was two years ago? Yeah, it was, yes. yeah. It was a yeah. long time ago. Yeah, so we haven't gotten back to that. Okay. I'll try to judge it up. Okay, great. I appreciate uh, it. Ellie, 
Ellie, you were going to say something before. Was it related to this or something else? I'm sorry. Maybe you were going to say that you weren't around at the time that this was being discussed. And I think so, because I was not on. I, I've only been, I haven't even hit the year mark yet as selectman. Right. Okay. So I was not here last year when you talked about that. So um, I'll take a look. I'll, I'll put in a plug for a code enforcement officer if you want. <laughs> yes, yes. We have it on the uh, warrant. And it's not a long warrant. There's only 13 articles, which is really pretty small for us. But we really, really, really need a code. Yes, yes, we do. Yes, it's we do. Long overdue. I know we've saved money over the past years with some of our select board members, but it's been penny wise and pound foolish. We've got some issues that are are uh, nightmarish and, and not, not not so much for the town, but for the neighbors around abutting some of these developments. And it's not the big projects, it's some of the smaller ones when there's two, three, four houses in a little area. So we need the help, we need the help. So any I agree. support would be appreciated. Yeah. Well, we do. And, and you know, not only that's for that small stuff, uh, which there's plenty of, but uh, we have some big projects coming to town and yeah, uh, on top of it, correct. You know, our, the, the current staff of inspectors uh, could really use uh, the support of a code enforcement officer. Yeah, you know, this, this is the first time I've worked on the management side of the town. I, most of my, you know, I spent 15 years on the school board side. We don't, we, the town, have no real infrastructure for management. And so, we rely on volunteers and we, what the volunteers do is rely on lawyers and insurance companies. And right. we need to be more proactive for our community and move forward off that dime. And that means we got to hire some people to do the job. Uh, yep. There's absolutely no question about it. And we are at the brink of some major changes in the community. And we want those changes to be within the context of what we want our town to look like. And that's going to take code enforcement. And yes. I don't think we should rely on Don Briggs or Phil Coombs. Certainly not me. on Because I don't know enough about all these, all these rules and regulations. Um, but we do need some that we can rely on. And enforce penalties. And watch the progress so that they don't screw up the roads. Putting in roads and or driveways. Big problem. Big, big, big problem because they're not being done right. And who suffers, we as a community suffer be, uh, down the road from it. So. Yeah. so after this, I'll tell you the town manager's coming, but let's get the code enforcement in first. <laughs> and let's see how that works for a couple of years and then we will be able to make a more informed decision. And the other big project we've worked on is, is the IT structure. We, set, we did a um, RFP, we had eight bids come in and you're going to see some serious changes in this coming year to the betterment of the town. Good, right? right. Yeah. So that's another positive step for us as a community. And taxes went down last year. Remember that. I think they're going to go down again this year, just a little bit. Oh, good. They're going to go down, at least flatline. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> How's that? Well, I think the idea of a code enforcement officer is really important. The Historic District Commission's been frustrated in the past with things that we've been upset about that haven't been enforced. Correct. And um, we're not the enforcing body. Right. We, we, we go by our uh, ordinance and our regulations and make a plan. And if someone doesn't follow the plan, um, a couple of times I've been on the reporting side, riding my bicycle by saying, hey, you can't do that. It's very uncomfortable. Mm. And we, you need an enforcement officer whose real job it is to take care of that. Right. And the monitors, they're putting in a road. The code enforcement officers should be there to see that they grade it correctly, the boundaries are set correctly, that the driveways are put in correctly. I mean, and we don't have that. Robert does some, but it's, it's yes. after the fact and it's too late. Dennis right. Patel is helpful. Uh, there's no any number of people, but it's piecemeal here and there, but it's not a united effort or coordinated effort, I should say. Or you, need, you need someone whose job it is and who has the authority to do this. Correct. That's right. exactly correct. Yeah. 
Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's great. I'm I'm pleased with that. That's Thank good. You. Hope it passes, Ellie. Thank you. Get out there and vote. <laughs> More yes. you can. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. Well, I'm really pleased with the work that we did with Jerry. Um, we were frustrated when he first came. That, well, first the house looked like this, and the next time was very different, and we went through a lot of iterations. But when he um, got onto this classic design and took different um, ideas, I thought that company, what's it called? Art Form. Art Form Homes. Um, did a really nice job responding to <laughs> Maddie, your drawings and all of, of that. <laughs> that. They did a really nice um, quality job. Oh. I wish we'd had that experience before the last new house we put in that I can see across my yard. But um, so, so I was living learn good one for the first time. Yes, good. yes. I'm, I'm really pleased with it, and I'm glad he wants to. Ralph will be so happy when he hears he wants to keep the Badger Tavern sign. Everybody yeah. will be good. <laughs> oh, that really will be a nice uh, selling feature. It will. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it will. Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, I just want would like to report to the commission that um, at the planning board meeting last night, um, we approved the we the planning board approved the Greenwood Pond LLC application that we discussed at our last meeting where we said that the, because there were gonna be no changes to the property, the HDC didn't feel that it was necessary for them to come before the HDC prior to planning board, which is the usual process. Um, Excellent. So Excellent. Uh, it did get approved and there are no changes to the property. It's just a uh, condominiumization of the two, uh, of the two building units. Uh, for estate planning purposes. Otherwise, there are no chance. And Ellie was there. She's an abutter to the property, right. uh, as was Jane Christie. So, good. Yeah. Good to hear. Well, and one more update. I did talk with the reason I called Ralph Murphy was to see if he would be willing to be on the idea committee for fundraising to preserve the windows in the library. And he said he was delighted. He'd love to do that. Good. And um, when he's his back is bad, but when he's up on his feet, so he's been connected with Ernie. Good. And then um, uh, the Kingston Chronicles that we did when Judy Huber, uh, not Judy Huber, Judy. Ruben. Ruben, thank you, was chair. Um, we had a lot of articles in the newspaper. So I happened to have done the one um, on Nichols Library. So I sent all of that, the Heritage Commission so that they know some background about those uh, uh, windows, those stained glass windows. And Ernie was glad to get that. So Ralph will be on that committee. And um, he, uh, Ernie, Bob Bean and Ralph starting to get some ideas. And you know, Ralph, he's called me three times with ideas. <laughs> I said, hold tight and talk to Ernie and Bob Bean about those ideas. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's great. He's he's really pleased that actually he said he was honored that we had suggested his name. Good. Good. Perfect. There you go. All right. Well, it's time. All right. It um, is. Can somebody make a motion to adjourn this beautiful meeting? And motion to adjourn. Second. Motion, motion made Both. by Ellie, seconded by Glenn. All in favor? Aye. Scott, Scott, aye. Get a roll call. Aye. Susan, aye. Virginia, I. And you know, I, I'll say I too, according to Robert's rules, it's up to the chair. The chairman can, do, unless there's any objection, the meeting is adjourned. Oh, I like to vote. I do like to vote, okay. <laughs> At the pleasure of the chair. I'm just offering a suggestion. And that's, I vote that's, yes. that, that's how I've been adjourning the planning board meetings, Ellie, because yeah. it just, by that's the time we get done, the last thing people want to do is a roll call vote. Exactly. That's true. Exactly. Yeah, your meetings are exceptionally long. Yes. So I love uh, you all for doing it too. Yes. Uh, <laughs> anyway, my vote is I as well. Okay. okay. So 7.46 PM, our meeting is adjourned. Adam, are you there? Thank I you, Adam. Podcast.